Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Everything is just beautiful. He's on a hunt for weird and wonderful objects. What a thing. It's carved timber. This week, a special journey on the trail of his all-time design heroes takes Drew all the way from the city of London to the Scottish borders. Is it an original? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, he has a religious experience. Fugit. Really? Yeah. These are right. Closely followed by another. I love that chair. It's Morris, Maybe Marshall like, yeah. and Faulkner. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing. We've got Morris and Pugin in one room together. This is good stuff. <sighs> With help from his team... <gasps> I can see some gold. Drew draws on decades of experience to discover the extraordinary and the unique. This is the stuff that really gets me excited. After 30 years of studying beautiful objects, for Drew, there are three unique designers who, spanning the late 18th and 19th centuries, have shaped the classic Georgian and Victorian British look, which inspires him. So Pugin, Soane and Morris, all of these three men created long-lasting styles and ethoses that are still important to millions of people around the world. Their influence can be seen far and wide. If you walk down most high streets, there is a piece of arts and crafts influence in there. There is a little piece of, of neoclassical and there is Gothic revival just in the high street. There's a sign there, there's a lamp, there's a building, there's a piece of stained glass. This cocktail we now call this British look. This British and English look came from all over the world. We were just very good at picking the best bits and bringing them back. And these three exponents of it did it better than anybody else. That's really rather special. Sir John Soane, the first of Drew's design heroes, was to embed the aesthetics of ancient Greece and Rome into the British tradition. Sir John Soane worked on incredible buildings, uh, in, mainly in the neoclassical style, it was his house in Lincoln's Inn Fields. They've called it the Oxford Dictionary of Architecture. He started collecting architectural fragments and pieces of art and history across the board, and he put them all into this house, which has become the Sir John Soane Museum. It's a repository for wondrous things, things that would have been lost and smashed up and gone to landfill and dispersed. He was one of the very first people to start collecting architectural antiques. He realised if he didn't save this stuff, somebody else just might not. Now and then, Drew's travels bring him face to face with the work of his heroes, and that's especially the case this week. Drew and T's first stop takes them 250 miles southeast to the heart of London and the doorstep of a sewn masterpiece. So this curtain wall uh, okay. is part, part of the Bank of England, which is right. one of the existing pieces of Sir John Soane's work left. Born in 1753, the fourth son of a bricklayer, Sir John Soane became one of the foremost architects of the Regency era. His inventive use of light, space, and his experimentation with forms of classical architecture earned him possibly his greatest commission, the Bank of England, which he rebuilt and vastly extended over 45 years. This curtain wall is still part of the Sonian original scheme that was put on here. It's the one that last survived. I've never heard you say that before. <laughs> <laughs> Just down Threadneedle Street from the Bank of England is Merchant Taylor's Hall, one of the 12 ancient companies known as liveries, which began in medieval times as trade bodies and have grown to be charitable groups. The merchant tailors are planning a clear out and the boys will be shown around by the company's surveyor, Nigel Gammon. The original hall dates back to around 1300 or just before. It's had numerous additions got destroyed in the Great Fire of London, and we subsequently got destroyed in the Second World War by incendiary bombs, um, rebuilt in 1957. We mainly run corporate events and functions and weddings and the alike. Again, the whole purpose of that being to support the philanthropy and supporting improving other people's lives. I do know all the, the, all the little cupboards and the, the nooks and crannies that most people don't get to see. Uh, so it should be a great day. 30, I believe. 30, here we go. 
Hello. Hi. How are you doing? T, oh, yeah. nice to meet you. Nice okay. to meet you. Welcome to the Merchant Tailors Hall. Thank you. Oh. Please go in. Now you're talking. Look at this. Today we are somewhere very grand. We are at the Merchant Tailors Hall. They said, we've got some stuff we want to get rid of. It's going to go to auction. Would you like to have a look at it prior? Yes, we would. Um, the original part of the building is, is the hall, which dates back to 1300. OK, But yeah. then we've had numerous additions, as you can imagine, for an organisation as old as ours. Yeah. 700 years in 2027. 700 wow. years. 700 years. Wow, it's remarkable. You get, like, a rock style access, cos they want to take you through all of the different bits of the building to see if there's anything there that you want to buy. And it's just a joy. You pick up things, you learn things, and you get to see and potentially purchase extraordinary items. And I have to now say, blimey, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> wow! The original stern badge from our barge. This stern badge from the Merchant Tailor's ceremonial barge dates back to Henry VIII's reign. That's the original That's stern... the original stern badge. My God. I didn't know you had that here. Didn't know it still existed. They've been keeping it secret from you. <laughs> what a thing. That's probably the best one I've ever seen. There's never a moment when I'm walking around these buildings that I don't, like, realise where I am and go, this is so great. Just everything is just beautiful. Incredible. I love this. I've been in some grand buildings on my time, but this is pretty damn good, isn't it? It's wonderful. We are now in the Great Hall. It's pretty great, isn't it? We're on this wonderful gallery they've got all the way around here. Fabulous stained glass windows, fabulous lighting, everything. And then Nigel says, we've got some things around the other side that we want you to have a look at, you want to sell. I'm going to buy something out of the Great Hall here. Great, you know, great. <laughs> and this, 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 some of them here. For the first two. Carpet and the table. Well, the, the desk, I can tell, is there's no great age to the desk, really. The first thing we see, sort of George III revival desk, is just something I just have no interest in. But underneath it, there's a rug. I can see straight away, hand-knotted, probably 19th century, just... This has got the look I really like. It's that faded grandeur. Something that was once incredible. Still there, hanging by a thread, right? faded and dirty and worn and repaired and torn, and I love it. God, that's faded. My word. The tear is the main thing that, that's the, the biggest issue for me, which devalues it by about 25%. What, what would you be happy with? 600 at a push, but... If I give you 650 for it, is that closer to the mark? Perfect. Yeah? Yep. Fine, we'll take it. Done deal. Thank you very much. Just imagine you're in the middle of a field at 6 o'clock in the morning at an antique fair. What are you going to pay for it? 500 quid. It's great access I've got here, so, you know, and there's still more things to see, so we settle at 650. This is a bit good. It's not for sale, I'm afraid, today. Ooh! <laughs> what is it? <laughs> That's Johnson. Is it an original? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, really? Yes. <laughs> This stunning mirror by 18th century gilder and carver Thomas Johnson features his distinctive style, mostly preserved in engravings from the time, and a grand display of his Rococo style. This mirror isn't in the manner of Thomas Johnson. It is a Johnson original. Um, <laughs> it's not often you see them out in the wild. Oh, gives me the shivers. Do we have to drag you away from it? Kicking and screaming. It's all right, screw to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's somewhere, somewhere between... 80 and 120,000 minimum. Our uh, bonus valuation has it 120. For really? For replacement value. <laughs> Get in. <laughs> there you go. Wow. So now we're heading down to the crypt. The crypt? The crypt. Wow. That, this. this is deep. Whoa. Look at this. Wow. My God. Yes, now you are in the oldest part of the building, 1327. 1327. <gasps> Look at this. It's got a real presence, hasn't it? It's very cryptic. <laughs> <laughs> so what's down here that you want to get rid of? Those items are going to auction. These um, are? Yes. Well, hang on a second. One umbrella stand. 
Can we fl just flip her up? It's in a bad old way, isn't it? Nigel has now brought me down to the crypt, which is the oldest part of the building. It's incredible, you know, it's, a, it's an ancient piece of London. As soon as I walk in, I was like, that's a cracking stick stamp there. <laughs> um, it's only about 120, 130 years old. Uh, it's oak, it's got its original lead line drip tray with it as well, and uh, it's just got the look, you know? It's just got that look. Suited and booted Victorian city gents would have stored their walking sticks and umbrellas in this stick stand at the entrance to the Merchant Tailors Hall. Made of oak with an original lead-lined pull-out drip tray and could be worth around £800. So th this is going to auction? Yes. With the drip tray? With the drip tray. Has it always been here? It's always been here. Can I give you 120 quid for it? Drew and T are in the heart of the City of London, visiting a livery company, the Merchant Tailors Hall. I've been in some grand buildings on my time, but this is pretty damn good, isn't it? It's wonderful. They're now underground in the almost 700-year-old crypt, and Drew wants a deal on an umbrella and stick stand. Has it always been here? It's always been here. Can I give you 120 quid for it? 120 quid, done. Thank you very much. Pleasure. I have to say, that's lovely. That's really nice. It's actually very good quality, and it's narrow. Some of them can be sort of that wide, which is only maybe six inch wider than that one there now, but they get in the way in the hallway and they, it sort of stops them being sold. Nice narrow one, really good provenance. Bargain at 120. All right, okay, let's see the next bit. That's it's very nice. close, just next door. Is it? All right, okay. <laughs> Into the more modern part of the building, I'm afraid. That's all right. <laughs> so what's in here? This lot. This lot. This? All to go. This would be of interest to me, for sure. Definitely that. That's lovely. In the 18th century, there was a fashion for young, wealthy gentlemen to go on a grand tour, visiting classical Greek and Roman sites around southern Europe to finish their education. Drew's hero, the architect Sir John Soane, won a travelling scholarship from King George III to study classical architecture in Italy in 1778. His time there inspired his neoclassical style. The fashion for travelling to the classical sites continued, and this image, dating to the early 20th century, shows the ancient forum and surrounding temples in Rome. Still in its original frame, this photograph could be worth up to £800. There's models of that section of temple. I've got a grand tour model of that piece. This photograph has it all. So it's the site completely open to the public. Life is going on in and around it. There's no fences around it. People are just sat there having a cup of tea and a sandwich in it. It's nothing special. Uh, it's great. I love it. Do you have a price? Make me an offer. 350. It match if you've got the matching parts, it's got to be worth 400. <laughs> I do have that model. Wow. Well, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, 400. I'm not going to argue over £50 with you. Yep, that's great. Because I have some of those models, and I'm always dealing in that type of thing, I really want this piece. I love it. Now, the only problem with this is you've got to part me from it. <laughs> it's wonderful. Didn't know what to expect. It's been as much fun as I hoped it would be, but great to actually have sold a few of the items which we were hoping to get rid of anyway. So, uh, a win all round, I think. All the money goes to the Merchant Taylors Foundation, which is to improve people's lives through education and philanthropy. So, perfect day. Well, I mean, we get some house calls, but this is quite grand, isn't it? Yeah. This is extraordinary, this has survived, and that it's still thriving. Yeah. Um, and doing a lot of good and doing so much good as well. I've bought some good things. The stick stand, go through the workshop, Piff will sort that out in the morning. The carpet, I've got a house that we're involved in. That will go in there. And then <laughs> the fantastic photograph. That's amazing. For now, I'm just gonna hang on to it for now. Do you know the van actually automatically goes to your house before the warehouse now? It is a strictly one in, one out policy, so, so, well, it's not. No, it's no, not. It's, no, it's not. I, was, I was waiting for the maths to catch no, it's up. Not, it's not strictly that. Next on the route puts Drew on the trail of his second all-time design hero, 
Augustus Pugin. Pugin's work, they call him the, the godfather of Gothic because what he did, he got the Gothic um, of, of the medieval period, that design, and then he created the Gothic revival. It was like the Gothic style is a ball and he just rolled it around to suit whichever piece he needed at that time. That he not only understands it, he can reinvent it and use it to his, in any advantage, in any situation, in any architectural form, and then relate that to floors, furniture, lighting, door handles. He was a genius. Drew can never predict where he's going to uncover work made by one of his heroes. And today, the boys have a long journey ahead of them, nearly 400 miles north to an antique shop in the Scottish borders. Right, so today we are off to Scotland. Right. We're off to meet a lady called Vicky Knott, who runs Junk Shop Antiques. So I've seen her stuff online, I've spoken to her a couple of times, but I've never been to the shop. It's always nice coming up to Scotland, isn't it? Yeah. It's uh, very Lovely. pretty. Nestled in the countryside, 40 miles south of Edinburgh, the tiny hamlet of La Mancha is said to get its name from a long-forgotten local estate owner with a vineyard in Spain. Today, tucked away on an organic farm, is another unexpected local surprise, an antique shop full of colour and curiosities, combining vintage pieces from Britain and Europe with textile crafts from India, and the brainchild of Vicky Knott. I've been running junk shop antiques for 21 years now, and I've got this amazing space where I get to sell all my stuff from. <laughs> To be quite honest with you, I'm just a little shopkeeper at heart. That's what I am. And I just want to have my customers in here, have a bit of chat, a bit of banter. I can't wait to have Drew and T here today. Hopefully, he's bought his money and we, we can get something sorted. Hello. Morning, boys. Vicky, Hello. how you doing? Nice to meet you. Thank you. At last. So this is, this is you, then? This is basically my brain spewed out into an antique shop. This is good. They came in the other day, they are. But I just think they'd be cool up on a wall. Just like one. Yeah. Just like up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they're good. I love them. It's just oh. great display. Today we are just outside Edinburgh at Junk Shop Antiques with Vicky. First impressions, honestly, a joyous riot of colour done particularly well. It's very easy to make an antique shop stuffy, but if you do bother and you care and you love what you do, this is what you end up with. It is a marketing and display tour de force. It's, it's very, very good. It's great. So how, how long have you been here? Uh, I've been in this shop a year. OK. Uh, but I am actually, believe it or not, moving into my original shop. Because I've seen that outside. Yes. Is that still open? Yes. Can so, we have a look there yeah, later? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Right. OK, so you've got lots of fabrics. Yeah. And eyes. Yeah. Aye, aye. She's going to roll me eyes oh, at you. Aye. <laughs> I'm gonna roll your eyes at me. <laughs> so what are you looking for just now? What's what's me? yeah, what Hon is honestly, the thing for honest, you? Honestly, right, I'm just looking for the next thing that I can't live without. That's all it is. And I have to say, I really love that. There's something about it, isn't there? I it's like quite it. haunting. It's got a slightly Turner-esque sky. It's a little oil on board, rustic scene. You can just see a, a cart horse and a couple traipsing through a very windy landscape. That's nice. Awful frame. Nice little painting. So, this one, 39? 39 quid, yeah. 30 for you. Sold. OK. I like that. Thank you very much. The little oil, 30 quid. Well, absolutely, I'm buying that. Lovely little thing. Good feeling to it. Yeah, we'll have that. OK, so this is the... This, this is... was your original, yeah? Yeah. So, I am... I'm actually really delighted. I'm moving back in here. I just... I love the outside of it. It's just so sweet. Yeah, it's great. OK, so you're going to cram everything into here? Yes. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> this chair. It's a good thing. Needs a wee bit of work. It's a really good thing. Is the, is the chair itself gone? No, the cane's all right, I think. Let's have a look. Okay, it's been... This, I'll, I'll be really honest, this was sort of like Well, home. there's those as well that I want to look at. Yeah, they're mine. <laughs> do you know where do you get these from? They're from uh, Westminster. Are they? Yeah. The Palace of Westminster? Palace of Westminster. These came from the Palace of yes, Westminster? Yes, they did. That's what I was told. Seriously. You know who designed the Palace of Westminster? You're about to tell me. Fugin. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah. These are right. They're just really, really good. They are just really, really good. Initially, I saw a chair. Went to start emptying everything off the chair, and there was four coat hooks. Really sort of butch-looking things. Gothic revival in manner. Just really interesting. And then, Vicky said, they came from Westminster. And I said, not the Palace of Westminster. And she goes, yeah. Now, large portions of that was designed by one person. Pugin. Are they Pugin-esque? Yes. Are they the right size? Yes. Are they of the right quality? Yes. They tick enough boxes for me to have a go at them. At the age of only 23, Augustus Pugin was asked by architect Charles Barry to help design the Palace of Westminster. Pugin was to take responsibility for the interior. His work ethic was extraordinary, creating intricate designs for every detail, including fixtures and fittings. The style of these brass coat hooks is in keeping with Pugin's neo-Gothic aesthetic. If their provenance can be confirmed, this pair could be worth around £600. So, how much are these, then? Oh, they're not for sale, Oh, Drew. come on. You, you said, over there, everything's for sale. Right, everything's bet me. Price. Bet me. For four? For the four. 200 quid. <sighs> oh, God. In the Scottish borders, Drew and T are in an antique shop with a unique vision. The last three of eyes. Aye, aye. She's going to roll me eyes oh, on you. Aye. <laughs> And Drew has spotted some coat hooks that might just be by one of his design heroes, Augustus Pugin. 200 quid. <sighs> oh, God. Sell me two. Sell me two, you keep two. Right, OK. OK, 150 for two. Sold. Done. Thank you very much. Wow, they're great. I was actually going to hide them. <laughs> Because I have. thought, I'm yeah. going to bloody well sell them to him if he comes in here, yeah. and I don't want to sell them. I pay £150 for two coat hooks. Seems crazy when you say it like that, isn't it? But two coat hooks designed by the godfather of the Gothic revival. You know, a bona fide genius. That we want. Old men's club. Oh, my God. That's the best thing I've seen today. So well. That is a brilliant find. How much is it? I want 100 quid for it. Thank you very much. Do you know what the first rule of Old Man's Club is? <laughs> uh, oh, I can't remember now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I came in here for something. <laughs> I came in here for something. <laughs> <laughs> That's Old Love Women's that. Club as well, let me tell you. Love that. That is great. There was once a thing called an Old Man's Club. Well, I want that, because I'm a bit of a grumpy old man myself. £100. Yes, thank you very much. What a great thing. Right, should we try and look at this chair oh, now? Yes. I keep trying to get yeah. to this chair. That's fine. Yeah, it needs work, doesn't it? it just, All the yeah, joints have come apart. That's why it came in here. That's the sort of stuff I have, I'd like in my house. Yeah. I mean? Now, the chair just looks like a fairly simple, rush seated, ebonised chair, doesn't it? It is and it isn't. These were produced by Morris, Marshall and Faulkner and Company at the latter part of the 19th century, William Morris's company. We've got Morris and Pugin in one room together. In fact, Pugin was sat on Morris. I mean, it's really... This is good stuff. How much is he? 125. Sold. Good. Thank you very much. I love that chair. It's Morris, yeah, it's made Marshall by, yeah. and Faulkner. Yeah, uh, I saw, no, I yeah. saw, a black, I saw one the other day. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing. Please stop but... talking, because I'm going to get upset now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of things that tell me it is by Morris, Marshall and Faulkner. The way the reading on the seat is done, with that recess into the centre, that is exactly how all of the seats of these chairs were done. Second clue is the little band across the front of the seat and the two bands down the side that have fallen off, that's exactly how they did it too. This chair is dead right, and I'm a very lucky boy. Furniture made by Drew's third design hero, William Morris, and his famous design company, was inspired by a medieval aesthetic and traditional hand craftsmanship. This ebonised Sussex chair, with its elegant and ingenious joinery and original woven rush seat, is typical of Morris & Co, and could be worth around £800. Pugin, Morris. Unbelievable. Why did I sell you the chair? 
because you're a dealer and you can't help yourself. Do you want 200 quid for it? No! <laughs> <laughs> this proves the point that you should go anywhere. The name on the door is Junk Shop Antiques. Well, it's far from that. I've managed to buy two pieces by two of the rock stars, the design geniuses of the 19th and early 20th centuries. So, yeah, this has been a normal call that's turned out to be something extraordinary. I'm over the moon with those finds. Thank you very much. So you should be. I'm very, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Shall we, um, let's go and settle up and we'll, we'll load the van up. Perfect. Right. Brilliant. Thank you. Today at Junk Shop Antiques with Vicky's been great. It's been really good fun. And then to walk away with two extraordinary pieces, design masterclass pieces, um, has been extraordinary. It really has. I've found today to be so much fun. It's been brilliant. To be quite honest with you, he bought a couple of really good bits that I'd sort of earmarked for myself. But yeah, he twisted my arm. He's got a great eye so he can pick something out of nowhere. So I think we did well there, actually. The Morris-type chair and that pair of hooks, you know, potentially Pugin. Very, I have to say, they look right to me. As she said that. the word Westminster, I was like, they're coming home with us. Yeah, they were just about worth what I paid for them if there's no association. If there is an association, you can add, well, you can triple it. No, I'm, I'm really pleased. Back in Conway, upholsterer and restorer Craig Hughes is deciding how to mend the damaged drug Drew bought at Merchant Taylor's Hall. Right, so the first thing I need to do is seal these edges to stop any of the pile of the carpet or the weave coming apart. It's literally just a case of running some glue along the edge. So once that's dry, I can start stitching that. Craig will stitch on the reverse of the carpet, using the grain to hide the repair. I'm going to go in along the weave of the carpet, but by going in there, I'm not going through the pile on the top, so you won't see the stitching. There's a lot of life left in this carpet. I can tell, try to get the needle through how strong it is. This, I'm, what I'm doing is giving this carpet another lease of life. This repair will last easily another 50 years maybe more. So what I do now is I'm going to start coming back on myself with smaller stitches, but straight stitches. I'm going to tie a knot. That knot will disappear inside there now, like that. Cut that off. Right, so that's the cut on this side repaired. I'm happy with that. Right, moment of truth now. I've got to turn this over the other way so I can see what the other side looks like. So that's it from there to there. I'm quite pleased with how the repair on the cuts come out. And once that's on the floor and being walked on and furniture on it and that, you're never going to see it anyway, and it will blend in. The third design hero Drew's always on the lookout for is also a champion of crafts. William Morris is another person that everybody knows. You know, in some respects, he's become like Hoover and Kit Kat and Baked Beans. It's like one of those just names that's bandied about. He's so much more than that. And he was also part of a group of people that changed Britain forever. They did. Their reaction to the mass production of the 19th century and their dislike of it and the fact that they wanted to stop that, change that, and, and bring us back into a simpler way of doing things. And what was that? It was the arts and crafts movement. Buildings, literature, furniture, houses, art by the spade load, poetry, painting. You know, all of these different things went into this. It was a place for thinkers and doers who looked at what we'd done in the past 
realised we were going to lose it and started to do it again. And what they left behind, I think, is one of the richest layers of design because it still relates easily into today's way of living. Out on the road, the boys are now heading 180 miles south to visit an antiques dealer who's just set up a shop in a new location. We're off to meet a guy called Brian today at Old Mill Antiques in Wilston. Uh, not Wilston, London. Wilston. Right. Not Wilston Green. Wilston, yeah. And um, he's taken on a new building and he's got two or three more dealers in there with him. So it's an older dealer with a new location. That's never going to get old, is it? No, because he's, he's going to go through his stuff and found things at the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything there should be solid winners all the way along. Set in a valley in West Yorkshire, the village of Wilsdon dates back to Saxon times. By the 19th century, it boasted several cotton mills, one of which has been converted into an antique centre by a group of four dealers. It's only been open a month, and the boys are being shown around by veteran dealer and restorer Brian O'Connell. It's a large place, and we have a real eclectic mix of things. Uh, I tend to specialise in, in Georgian furniture and early furniture. You can tell what sort of nails or screws or joints or timbers should be used because I restore as well as, as buy. I'm very much looking forward to seeing Drew and T coming today. I love some of the stuff that Drew buys. Yeah, he, he likes quality items, so hopefully he'll have a good time today, and, and so will I. Hello. Hello. Hi, Drew. T. Hi. Good to see you. Right. Nice right. Right. Nice well. Yeah, welcome to the old mill, Auntie. Come inside, have a yes, look. Yes, please. Yeah, OK. After you. Thank you. Thank you very All much. Right. <laughs> oh, Dougie. Massive. Wow. Well, right round. Yeah. Very smart. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> First impressions are good. As a dealer, you walk in and you clock everything straight away. Well laid out, clean, and everything's got a price on it. So how, how long have you been doing this, then? Because, I mean, there's some experience behind this. Uh, over 40 years. Oh, yeah. so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's that? Stained glass, thought to be by Edward Byrne-Jones. It came from a collector uh, of, of arts and crafts stuff who unfortunately died yeah. without any information about it. OK. Similar to be found in the Epiphany Chapel, Winchester. POA. Yeah, Epiphany. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, do, we have to, do I have to have an epiphany to work out how much it is? <laughs> well, yeah, I sent photographs off to the Morris Society yeah. and they thought it might be by him, okay. but, you know, nobody's actually seen it in the flesh. As soon as I walk through the door, I clock something. And it's a piece of stained glass. It's in the manner of Morris and it's got a couple of cues on there that might be Morris. The real big one for me that says, yes, it's close enough to take a punt on it, is a running across the top, there's a, a band with circles in it, just with little circles. That is Morris to a T. William Morris set up his company in 1861, and from the 1870s, his longtime friend and the artist Edward Byrne Jones was Morris's main designer of stained glass, for which the company became particularly renowned. Influenced by medieval art, the designs were often collaborations with the craftsmen who made them. Though lacking in providence, this piece could be a late example by Morris's company. If verified, it may be worth around £6,000. What do you value it at? Well, my problem is I, I, I dislike it, so... Um, I mean, we're talking a few thousand pounds. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do remember, this is my specialised subject. I know, I know, yes, yes, yes. So... Yeah. Um, seven. Seven's too much. Drew and T are visiting a new antique centre in West Yorkshire, run by Brian O'Connell. Welcome to all my antiques. Wow, very smart. Thank you. Within minutes, Drew spotted a large piece of stained glass that may just be by one of his greatest design heroes, William Morris. Do remember, this is my specialised subject. I know, I know, yes, yes, yes. So, um... Seven. Seven. 
Seven's too much. Seven's too much. Right. Without a firm attribution. Right. At the minute, it's in the manner of, <laughs> which makes it worth about 1,200 quid. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah. Well, have you got a piece of paper saying William Morris did that? <laughs> no, no. No. But, Do you want to no, go no, and write one? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could you sort that out? <laughs> that, that's, that's the reality of what we're dealing with. It's late if it is. So it's Morris and Co. Yeah. Which is, means after his death, mm -hmm. which means less value and less desirability. Yeah, I mean, my problem is it's, it's, it's not a piece I bought to sell. POA means you do want to sell it. I know, I know. It being in the shop means you do want to sell it. Yeah. Um, well, where are you up with it? Two and a half. Mm, no. Um, no, it'd have to be near a five for me to, to part with it, I'm afraid. Right, right. Let's carry on looking around. Yep, OK. See if we can have a deal, maybe, right. on something else. So 40 years. Oh. Even with my training, right, I've only been doing it for 36. Oh. Even with, even... Well, I, I started as a harpsichord maker. <laughs> <laughs> Strangely enough. Really? Early musical <laughs> instruments, yeah. And uh, the guy that I worked for <laughs> collected antiques, so I started restoring for him. Yeah. And at the age of 17. So that's quite specialised harpsichords. It is. It was a lovely job. Is there a lot of call for harpsichords? Yeah. Well, do you remember <laughs> Golden Brown Stranglers? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hugh yeah. Cornwall. Did, did that one that's on the video. Did you? Yeah. Came on, watched it on top of the pots, like, ah! <laughs> <That's> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Interesting. So we're now moving on to, uh, well, actually, that's mine. I love the faces in this. Everyone's got a tiny oh, face. Yeah. What a thing. This is a very unusual piece of furniture. It's got something I've never seen. On the fronts, it's got little faces scratched into the surface. Were they there from new? I don't think so. Are they a great addition to it? Yes. You know, they're a bit of fun. They're a bit, that's just something that, mark something out as different, but it's had a very hard life. There's a myriad of problems all over it. How much are you asking for that? Um, 850. Financially, it's not worth me getting into it. It's a fantastic piece of furniture, but it, the figures just aren't going to add up. That's what I do like as well. You paint that behind there. Yeah. <laughs> it is mine. Um... You bring it down? Yeah. The most... The most Lovely picture. It's just a great picture. And it's a poster. It's an American sort of art festival or something. Poster, clearly by the extremely famous painter Edward Hopper. It's great. It's just a nice thing. It doesn't have to be worth a fortune to be something I want to buy. It's nice, that. How much is it? It's just a poster. It's been... They've locked the... Sat the framer. Yeah. 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 You're liking all the things that I want to keep myself. Well, you shouldn't. <laughs> Similar to oh, you've you been, you've the trouble. <laughs> Couple of hundred. One twenty, I think, is probably favourite for me. Where I want to be. Do one fifty. One forty. Yeah. Okay then. Sold. Yeah. Thank you. The light on that picture is wonderful, but also the fact that it was, you know, American art gallery, that type of thing. It's just got something. That's certain something that changes the look of a room. Okay. Right. So find yourself back by the glass. What are your thoughts? I think we need to... We're going to meet somewhere. I think we can have a deal. Right. But both of us have got to experience a bit of pain. Yes, I know. It's how much pain I can experience. How much pain can you can take? take? And how much pain am I willing to give? <laughs> OK. And what did I say? Two and a half? I can't go alone for. I bet you can. Oh. It needs to start with a three. Yeah. It's got, it's got to be three, seven, five. Three seven. Three seven. Sold. Right. Thank you. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. My gut says I am seventy percent there that it's right. Now, if I am right, if I am right, I've just done very well. And if not, I've just made a big, very expensive mistake. And one thing that's going to help is if you had a list 
of every time they use that pattern in a church, in an ecclesiastical building, because that's where that's come from. Luckily, there is one, right? I will have to go through every time that type has been used, see if the measurements are on there, see if the church still exists, and then I can, you start picking away at it. But right now, it's just down to work. It's hours and hours and hours of trawling to find where that came from. You need to find where it came from. But there's enough clues in it. A mate of mine, he said to me, a good deal is where you feel a bit of pain and you feel a bit of pain. So you've pain. taken a bit of a hit <laughs> and I've paid a bit more. Yeah. Yeah? No, I'm happy with that. That's fine, yeah. You sure? Yeah, yeah. I'll miss it, but yeah. yeah. Not that much. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you, you can get the other half out now, put it in the window. <laughs> yes, that's true. You haven't got any more yeah, of it, have three, you? Yes, yeah. You haven't no, got any more. No, no. That would have been one of a piece. There would have been I about know. five or six more of those all stacked on top of each other. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Let's do it. Thank yep. you. Our visit today to Old Mill Antiques. Well, you don't get many of them to the pound, do you? There's some great things here. There's a couple of pieces of furniture I was seriously interested in, but my mind was completely taken away by the glass. We've bought something potentially extraordinary. If it turns out to be right, I'll be over the moon. That chance to buy something that potentially came out of the mind of one of the masters. And that knowledge of, of just that, that sense that there's still stuff out there. There's still little hidden gems waiting to be found. Brian, thank you very much, mate. Much appreciated. It's been a pleasure, it? true. Thank All you. Right. Brian, dealer of four decades, knowledgeable restorer, likes good things, brave, buys well, lots of stock. That's a good contact. He is a good contact. Take care, buddy. See you later. Okay. See you. Bye -bye. Well, that was good. If not slightly expensive. If it is right, I really don't want to sell. He didn't want to sell it. I don't want to sell it, because it's genuinely beautiful. We're going to go straight to your house on the way back. It's going to go straight to my house, right? The main thing is I need to sit and, and really do my homework on it. But it's a lot of money to hoik out there without a concrete attribution. Can I be honest with you? We're, I said 70-30. I think it's 50-50 now. Right. I really do. But I'll take that chance. Because if it's right, the rewards are great in a number of ways. And if I'm wrong... No, carry on Friday. No, or the Friday after. Anyway, there you go. A good day. With a fresh collection of items he thinks might have been made by his design heroes, Drew could not be more delighted. This week has been really rather incredible. I got to rub shoulders for a brief second with three of my heroes. I got to, I think, buy a piece of stained glass by William Morris. I'm still 50-50 on that. I got to buy a pair of coat hooks, which again, might be, but we're not entirely sure from the Palace of Westminster and designed by Pugin. And I got to buy things from Merchant Taylor's Hall in the shadow of Soane's work. It is the best job in the world for a, a, a very uneducated lad from North Wales to be wandering around in those buildings and trying in some small way to understand little bits of them is, is still blows my mind. And what was that? It was the arts and crafts movement. Buildings, literature, furniture, houses, art by the spade load, poetry, painting. You know, all of these different things went into this. It was a place for thinkers and doers who looked at what we'd done in the past, realised we were going to lose it and started to do it again. And what they left behind, I think, is one of the richest layers of design because it still relates easily into today's way of living. Out on the road, the boys are now heading 180 miles south to visit an antiques dealer who's just set up a shop in a new location. 
We're off to meet a guy called Brian today at Old Mill Antiques in Wilston. Uh, not Wilston, London. Wilston. Right. Not Wilston Green. Wilston, yeah. And um, he's taken on a new building and he's got two or three more dealers in there with him. So it's an older dealer with a new location. That's never going to get old, is it? No, because he's, he's going to go through his stuff and found things at the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything there should be solid winners all the way along. Set in a valley in West Yorkshire, the village of Wilsdon dates back to Saxon times. By the 19th century, it boasted several cotton mills, one of which has been converted into an antique centre by a group of four dealers. It's only been open a month, and the boys are being shown around by veteran dealer and restorer Brian O'Connell. It's a large place, and we have a real eclectic mix of things. Uh, I tend to specialise in, in Georgian furniture and early furniture. I can tell what sort of nails or screws or joints or timbers should be used because I restore as well as, as buy. I'm very much looking forward to seeing Drew and T coming today. I love some of the stuff that Drew buys. Yeah, he, he likes quality items, so hopefully he'll have a good time today, and, and so will I. Hello. Hello. Hi, Drew. T. Hi. Good How to you see you. Right. Nice right. 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 to well. Yeah, welcome to the old mill, Auntie. Let's come inside. Have yes, a look. please. Yeah, OK. After you. Thank you. Thank you very All much. Right. <laughs> oh, Ducky. Massive. Wow. Well, right round. Yeah. Very smart. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> First impressions are good. As a dealer, you walk in and you clock everything straight away. Well laid out, clean, and everything's got a price on it. So how, how long have you been doing this, then? Because, I mean, there's some experience behind this. Uh, over 40 years. I thought yeah. so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Stained glass, thought to be by Edward Byrne-Jones. It came from a collector. Uh, of, of arts and crafts stuff who unfortunately died yeah. without any information about it. OK. Similar to be found in the Epiphany Chapel, Winchester. POA. Yeah, Epiphany. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah いらなれそうけれなかとけきけないからもらくりさまたピカピカせなかなのきかただひらもりしねきまきさまれなじょわなこれさぶとこけますこたきすきまなしはりかにとこんとしはがきとひかさきまずさげんざなきはりと Ira Nano kikatada hira modi sine ki maki samarena Joana kolan sabu to ku ke masu kota kisu ki mana si hari kani tu konto si hanya kita hika saki marisa genza naki hari tu hira mosi gesi u. なれそうけれなかとけきけないからもらくりさまたピカピカせなかなのきかただひらもりしねきまきさまれなじょわなこれさぶとこけますこたきすきまなしはりかにとこんとしはがきとひかさきまずさげんざなきはりと <laughs> yeah, could you sort out? That, that's that's the reality of what we're dealing with. It's late if it is. 
so it's Morrison Co., yeah. which is, means after his death, mm -hmm. which means less value and less desirability. Yeah, I mean, my problem is it's, it's, it's not a piece I bought to sell. POA means you do want to sell it. I know, I know. It being in the shop means you do want to sell it. Yeah. Um, well, where are you up with it? Two and a half. Mm, no. Um, no, it'd have to be near a five for me to, to part with it, I'm afraid. Right, right. Let's carry on looking around. Yep, OK. See if we can have a deal, maybe, right. on something else. So 40 years. Oh. Even with my training, right, I've only been doing it for 36. Oh. Even with, even... Well, I, I started as a harpsichord maker. <laughs> <laughs> Strangely enough. Really? Early musical instruments, yeah. And uh, the guy that I worked for collected antiques, so I started restoring for him Yeah. And at the age of 17. So that's quite specialised, harpsichords. It is. It was a lovely job. Is there a lot of call for harpsichords? Yeah. Well, do you remember <laughs> Golden Brown Stranglers? Yeah, yeah. 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 Hugh yeah. Cornwall. Did, did that one that's on the video. Did you? Yeah. Came on, watched it on top of the pots, like, ah! <laughs> that's my... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Interesting. So we're now moving on to, uh, well, actually, that's mine. I love the faces in this. Everyone's got a tiny oh, face. Yeah. What a thing. This is a very unusual piece of furniture. It's got something I've never seen. On the fronts, it's got little faces scratched into the surface. Were they there from new? I don't think so. Are they a great addition to it? Yes. You know, they're a bit of fun. They're a bit, that's just something that, mark something out as different, but it's had a very hard life. There's a myriad of problems all over it. How much are you asking for that? Um, 850. Financially, it's not worth me getting into it. It's a fantastic piece of furniture, but it, the figures just aren't going to add up. So what I do like as well. You paint that behind there. Yeah. <laughs> it is mine. Um... You bring it down? Yeah. The most... The most Lovely picture. It's just a great picture. And it's a poster. It's an American sort of art festival or something. Poster, clearly by the extremely famous painter Edward Hopper. It's great. It's just a nice thing. It doesn't have to be worth a fortune to be something I want to buy. It's nice, that. How much is it? It's just a poster. It's been... They've locked the... Sat the framer. Yeah. 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 You're liking all the things that I want to keep myself. Well, you shouldn't. <laughs> Similar to oh, you've you've been, you've the trouble. <laughs> Couple of hundred. 120, I think, is probably favourite for me, where I want to be. Do 150? 140. Yeah, OK, then. Sold. Thank you. The light on that picture is wonderful, but also the fact that it was, you know, American art gallery, that type of thing. It's just got something... That's certain something that changes the look of a room. OK, right, so I find myself back by the glass. What are your thoughts? I think we need to... We're going to meet somewhere. I think we can have a deal. Right. But both of us have got to experience a bit of pain. Yes, I know. It's how much pain I can experience. How much pain can you take? take? And how much pain am I willing to give? <laughs> OK. And what did I say? Two and a half? I can't go alone than four. I bet you can. Oh. It needs to start with a three. Yeah. Well, it's, got, it's got to be three, seven, five. Three seven. Three seven. Sold. Right. Thank you. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. My gut says I am seventy percent there that it's right. Now, if I am right, if I am right, I've just done very well. And if not, I've just made a big, very expensive mistake. And one thing that's gonna help is if you had a list of every time they use that pattern in a church, in an ecclesiastical building, because that's where that's come from. Luckily, there is one, right? I will have to go through every time that type has been used, see if the measurements are on there, see if the church still exists, and then I can, you start picking away at it. But right now, it's just down to work.
it's hours and hours and hours of trawling to find where that came from. You need to find where it came from. But there's enough clues in it. A mate of mine, he said to me, a good deal is where you feel a bit of pain and you feel a bit of pain. So you've pain. taken a bit of a hit <laughs> and I've paid a bit more. Yeah. Yeah? No, I'm happy with that. That's fine, yeah. You sure? Yeah, yeah. I'll miss it, but yeah. yeah. Not that much. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you, you can get the other half out now and put it in the window. <laughs> yes, that's true. You haven't got any more of it, three, have you? Yes, yeah. You haven't <laughs> no, got any more. No, no. That would have been one of a piece. There would have been I about know. five or six more of those. I know. All stacked on top of each other. Yeah. OK. All right, okay. let's do it. Thank yep. you. Our visit today to Old Mill Antiques. Well, you don't get many of them to the pound, do you? There's some great things here. There's a couple of pieces of furniture I was seriously interested in, but my mind was completely taken away by the glass. We've bought something potentially extraordinary. If it turns out to be right, I'll be over the moon. That chance to buy something that potentially came out of the mind of one of the masters. And that knowledge of, of just that, that sense that there's still stuff out there. There's still little hidden gems waiting to be found. Brian, thank you very much, mate. Much appreciated. Been a really. pleasure, Drew. Thank right. you. Brian, dealer of four decades, knowledgeable restorer, likes good things, brave, buys well, lots of stock. That's a good contact. He is a good contact. Take care, buddy. See you Take later. Care. See you. Well, that was good, if not slightly expensive. If it is right, I really don't want to sell. He didn't want to sell it. I don't want to sell it, because it's genuinely beautiful. It's going to go straight to your house on the way back. It's going to go straight to my house, right? The main thing is I need to sit and, and really do my homework on it. But it's a lot of money to hoik out there without a concrete attribution. Can I be honest with you? We're, I said 70-30, I think it's 50-50 now. Right. I really do. But I'll take that chance. Because if it's right, the rewards are great in a number of ways. And if I'm wrong... No, carry on Friday. No, or the Friday after. Anyway, there you go. A good day. With a fresh collection of items he thinks might have been made by his design heroes, Drew could not be more delighted. This week has been really rather incredible. I got to rub shoulders for a brief second with three of my heroes. I got to, I think, buy a piece of stained glass by William Morris. I'm still 50-50 on that. I got to buy a pair of coat hooks, which again, might be, but we're not entirely sure, from the Palace of Westminster and designed by Pugin. And I got to buy things from Merchant Taylor's Hall in the shadow of Soane's work. It is the best job in the world for a uh, a very uneducated lad from North Wales to be wandering around in those buildings and trying in some small way to understand little bits of them is, is still blows my mind. <laughs>